Hello everyone, welcome back and today we are looking at question 217 which is contains duplicate. The question is straightforward, we are given a nums array and we want to see if this array contains any duplicates. If the answer is yes, the output should be true, but if all the numbers are distinct then we don't have any duplicates and we just return false. Okay, so example one gives us one, two, three, one. We can see that we have one here and we have another one here. So we have duplicates. So the answer would be true. Now example two gives us one, two, three, four. So all the numbers are distinct, which means we don't have any duplicates. So the output should be false. And in example three, we can see that we have a lot of duplications going on. So yes, the output should be true. Now let's go to the blackboard and see how can we tackle this. Okay, so I have created an array that contains two, three, one, one. And we can clearly see that we have duplicates, one here and the one there. Looking at a slow approach, a brute force solution would be something like the following. At each number, we want to check if we can see this number again in the array. In order to do this, we need a pointer to point at the number that we are at, and we need a pointer to move through the array and check if we have a duplicate. So for instance, we are starting at two, and the other pointer will be here. Is two and three the same? No, this pointer moves here. Is two and one the same? No, this pointer moves again here. Is two and one the same? Again, no. This pointer reached the end, so this is time to update both pointers. Now the green will start at three and the blue will be next to it at one. So is three and one the same? No, is three and one the same? No, again. We reached the end, so update the two pointers. Now the green will start at one and the blue pointer will be next to it. Is one the same as one? The answer is yes. So we have a duplicate and we just return true. This approach will require two for loops, one for loop for each pointer. So we will have a nested for loop and the time complexity would be big O of n squared, where n is the number of elements in the array. This approach is extremely slow. And now let's look at how can we optimize it. So. For the optimization, we don't want to use two pointers. We only want to use one. And we only want to move to the right without going back and forth and back and forth. So let's imagine we have a big box right here. And this box will contain the numbers in the array. So at each number, we want to ask the following question. Does this number appear in the box? If the answer is no, we should add it. So in this case, the box is empty. Is two in the box? No. So we add it. Now we advance the pointer. Is three in the box? No. So we put three in the box and we advance the pointer. Is one in the box? No, we add one. Then we advance the pointer. Is one in the box? We check the box. Yes, we find a one and we return true. We have duplication. So what is exactly this box? So let me remove the box word and write hash set. This box represents a hash set. A hash set is basically a collection of unique elements. In other words, a hash set contains some values, but it does not allow any duplication. Why is this hash set so important for us? Well, because one, the searching function takes constant time. Two, the insertion also takes a constant time. So using a hash set, we can make our algorithm extremely fast. And the main two functions we will use are called contains. This function is used to see if an element is in the hash set, so contains. And to add something to the hash set, we use the function add. Now let's see how can we do this. Okay, so as we said, we will only have one pointer. And now we will ask ourselves, does the hash set contains two? No. So we will add two to the hash set. Now we advance the pointer. Does the hash set contains three? No, so we can add three to the hash set. Advance the pointer. Does the hash set contains one? No, we're going to add one. Okay, so now advance the pointer. Does our hash set contains a one? Well, yes, it's right here. So now we can say, oh, so we have duplicates. If we try to add this one, we will have duplicates. So we just return true and we exit from the function. Now, if you ask what happens if you try to add a duplicate to the hash set, for instance, let's try to add another one. The hash set will simply 
take the duplicates, override it, and add this one. So in the end, we will only have one one and no duplicates. Now let's see how can we implement this in lead code. Okay, so we said we need a hash set and our hash set will contain integers since the array contains integers. So we need a hash set. As we can see, our hash set contains integer. So hash set and I will call my hash set set new hash set. And now we will loop through all the numbers in the array. So for int num inside of nums, we will ask ourselves one question. Does our set contains this num? We said the function is called contains. So if set dot contains num, we have a duplicate. So just return true. Okay. But if this is not the case, then we don't have this number in the hash set and we need to add it. So set dot add num. And when this for loop finishes, and if we did not return true, then at this point we have been added all the elements in the array in the hash set and just return false since we don't have any duplicates. So return false. Let's run the code. Now let's submit. Okay, so let's look at the time and space complexity. Starting with the space complexity, we see that we used a hash set. And in the worst case, we don't have any duplicates, so we need to add all the numbers in the array inside the hash set. Assuming we have n numbers in the array, the hash set will contain n numbers, so the space complexity would be big O of n. Now, let's look at the time complexity. We said that the contains functions require constant time, and the insertion function also requires a constant time. But we use the for loop, to move through all the numbers in the array. Assuming we don't have any duplicates, we need to move through all of those n numbers. So the time complexity would be big O of n. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Best of luck to you and see you in the next one.